Hello everyone, hope you are all doing well and are all uh, safe on the ships or at home. Uh, thank you so much for uh, watching my videos. Uh, this video is again very very important video in the series of uh, rules and regulations on uh, shipping and maritime industry where we are going to talk about uh, the insurance. Okay, you know the ships are very very expensive, uh, they can be millions of dollars, so the ships have to be insured. So this this video, uh, there are a lot of, uh, there are three different types of assets which can be insured, no? like you uh, uh, insure your uh, car etc. You know? So there are three types of major assets which you can insure. So uh, let us let us start from the uh, history of the insurance. How does it? How did it start? And then we'll go about uh, what kind of insurance, who does it, and how it is done, etc. And all all these things we'll cover in this uh, video. Okay. Uh, so please keep watching uh, till the end of the video, and uh, please do share this video with your friends and colleagues so that they can also be benefited like what you are getting done today. Okay. Thank you so much. Let's go into the video. Hello everyone, let's dive into the video. Okay, if you take a ship, uh, you know, what, what are the various things which you can uh, ship in the sense in the, the whole maritime industry? Okay, what are the three major things which uh, somebody can insure? Okay, first, first is the ship itself. Okay, and uh, the second will be the cargo which she is carrying. Okay, the ship includes all uh, the steel portion, the equipment, everything, you know. So that's that's the ship, ship which can be in, uh, insured. Okay, second will be the cargo which can be insured, which which uh, the ship is, ship is, ships are carrying uh, cargo. So the cargo can be insured, cargo can get damaged, etc. You know, all those things are there. So cargo can be insured. The third thing is because of actions of the ship okay there can be lot of uh, there can be sometimes there can be losses to other parties okay because of the action of the ship interaction because the ship has to go from one port to another there can there will be interaction in the load port there can be interaction out at sea there can be interaction with the shore and other third parties and the discharge port Okay, so all these three places during the interaction, it is possible that the operation of the ship might cause some losses to the third party. So to cover this, the third party liabilities, we have the special insurance. Okay, so there are three assets which you can say basically. Uh, the third one, you cannot, the, the ship is obviously an asset. The cargo is obviously an asset. <coughs> the the third party uh, liability, okay, you cannot actually call it an asset, but uh, you know that's that's a uh, very plausible thing which can be insured. Okay, so these are the three places or areas where you need insurance. Okay, so let's go into the video and uh, step by step I will keep on explaining what it is now. <coughs> what is the insurance in the maritime industry? Types of insurance. As we saw, first is the hull and machinery. Okay, we we talked about the equipment, everything. So here we separated it into the hull, that is basically the steel part of the ship, <coughs> and the equipment, equipment, the machinery, you know, everything else except the steel, that is called the machinery part. So this is this will be what ship owners. This is one property. The I am owning the ship. So if I am the ship owner, I am owning the ship. So I am insuring the ship and everything in, in, inside it. The outside the shell plating, the steel, plus the all the equipment, machinery, everything I am insuring. Okay, there is the first time. This is very, very straightforward, you know. My property, I am insuring uh, so that it gets damaged, I get reimbursed. Okay. Second one is the cargo interest. Cargo owner's insurance. So who does this? Cargo. The, I am the owner of the ship, so I insure uh, the car. Uh, insure the ship. If I am the owner of the cargo, then I ca in, uh, insure the cargo. So okay. So there are possibilities where uh, you know the first uh, place where I will go if uh, the cargo is damaged is the ship owner. 
I'll go and tell him, boss, I, I loaded the cargo on your ship, uh, but uh, 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 you know, you spoiled my cargo. The cargo is not uh, as per the specification I wanted, all those things. But there are possibilities where, you know, it was beyond owner's control to reduce the loss to your cargo. Okay. So in that case, then owners will tell, ship owners will tell, I am not liable for your damage. So please don't ask me anything. In that case, then the cargo owners don't have anybody to go to, then it becomes a big problem. So it is better to insure the cargo so that if the ship owner doesn't pay or there are circumstances where it is beyond the ship owner's uh, uh, reach or uh, you know area of where he can uh, influence. In that case, then the cargo owners insure their cargo with the insurance company. Okay, this is the second part. First is the ship owner and this is the cargo. And this is okay again very straightforward. No, it's my cargo, I am insuring the cargo. Third one is the protection and indemnity. What does this mean? Uh, basically, ship owner's third party liability. As I mentioned, it is possible that during the normal operation of the ship, the ship can cause loss to the third party. Either by way of operation or she is involved in an accident. In that case also there is third party if you even in your car right you have a third party liability if you own a car and you you know about the insurance you have a third party liability that if if the other car or the other vehicle also uh, get damaged then that is also covered in your insurance based on your premium what you're paying okay so these are the three major major areas where uh, assets can be insured okay this video basically what we'll be covering is the breakdown of what marine insurance is all about okay so there are a lot of things it is not this 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 video is i am going to make maybe 10 to 15 minutes video which which uh, can cover basically nothing about the marine insurance in detail okay so you will have an overall picture of how the marine insurance works and what are the different types and who are the different entities who are involved in insuring of the ship okay so let's go to the next slide <coughs> Hull and machinery insurance okay so we had uh, seen what the types so we will go uh, each one type a little deeper hull of the vessel okay so as i mentioned all the steel areas of the vessel that is insured uh, if there is a uh, damage to the hull it is possible that you know you go onto a jetty and uh, the hull is, uh, you know, the hull touches the jetty and hull is uh, open up, hull is broken. A uh, lot of things are possible. Okay, uh, the the anchor chain is lost or something like that. You know, uh, so all these things come under the uh, hull and hull of the vessel. That is basically the steel. Whatever steel is used on the ship, if there is any issue, then. The, it's it's called the hull of the vessel and hull and machinery insurance takes care of it okay second one machinery and equipment as i mentioned uh, you have the uh, all the engine machinery you have cargo equipment you have pumps you have uh, you know cranes all, all these equipments which are not part of the hull you know actual hull that comes under the machinery and equipment okay Third part is something very odd. Uh, you, you know, uh, this is three fourth of the collision liability. What what is the three fourth of collision liability? Uh, see, basically, what happens in case of uh, uh, you no, know, God forbid that the vessel has a collision. Okay, so what happens? Uh, the there there is a court case which runs and. Uh, the percentage of liability, uh, the percentage of error, you know, responsibility is put on both the vessels. Okay. So, uh, for example, if uh, the total cost of the collision was, uh, for example, uh, USD 10. Okay. We will we'll keep this numbers very, very small. It's obviously not going to be uh, 10. It's, it's going to be tens of millions of dollars. Okay. So, for simplicity, for understanding, easy understanding we'll go to uh, we'll keep 12 okay so uh, so that you can divide it easily okay so uh, we'll keep it 12 dollars is the total cost of the 
uh, what do you say the uh, accident and what what is the repair going to cost so to bring both the vessels back to normal okay both the vessels are huh? both the vessels both the vessels put together it is 12 dollars okay now what they say then you uh, they say that your vessel is uh, uh, you know uh, what do you say is the more responsible for the collision okay uh, it was more of you and than the other ship which uh, resulted in the collision okay so out of 12 dollars we take uh, we we assume 75% is your uh, responsibility and 25% is the other person's responsibility or let's keep uh, 66 and 33 you know divide by 3 it will be easier 66 and 33 so that will be uh, 8 and uh, 4 okay so uh, our ship is 2/3 uh, 2/3 is uh, uh you know uh, eight and one third is uh, four so uh, the, our our total uh, liability is usd eight so we have to pay eight dollars okay so eight dollars is what uh, we have to pay for getting uh, the uh, getting out of the claim so and uh, out of that you know out of eight three fourth that is six dollars Six dollars will be paid by the Allen Machinery Insurance. Okay, there are two types of insurance. Okay, on for the ship, we are talking about the ship now. There are Allen Machinery, and there is the other one which we call the Protection and Indemnity Club. Okay, the third one we saw. So these are the two types of uh, people who insure the ship and the third-party liabilities. Okay, so. So out of the total, uh, we will just uh, wrap, uh, just summarize the accident. The collision happened. Okay, then the total cost was twelve dollars for repairing both the vessels. Okay, and uh, out of that, you had uh, given uh, the the court had told uh, you are two thirds responsible for the accident, and uh, the other ship was one third responsible for the accident. So out of twelve, two thirds is. Eight dollars, okay. So two by three into two four into eight dollars, okay. So eight dollars is the cost of repairing uh, your part. What you need to put in, okay. Out of eight dollars, three fourth, that is six dollars. Three four six dollars will be paid by the Holland Machinery Insurance. Okay, that's that's the calculation. Uh, it is covered by the Holland because your hull is also breached, right? Your hull is also breached. and there is some kind of a third party liability so this you can tell it's it's a mixed kind of uh, you know scenario where if it is only the ship there is no damage to the third party or something like that then the allen machinery will aram se will pay you but in this case of collision there is some level of third party damage also and there is damage to hull so this boat are fighting it is hull because you have to pay then he told that is third party damage so you have to pay so they came into a conclusion that okay 3/4 uh, hull will pay and 1/4 uh, pni club will pay okay so in that case so the 3/4 collision liability also comes under to the hull and machinery insurer next go to the production and indemnity club that is the second type of insurance okay all third party liabilities okay third party liabilities is what uh, anything uh, like uh, you know you are you are uh, going out at sea and you hit a fishing boat okay or you cut a net okay don't those uh, fishermen go on complain so you have to you are liable for those uh, damages what you have caused to the boat you have uh, what what you have caused to the net etc that is while uh, going here when you come to the port maybe you hit a crane or uh, you know hit a boy and the boy gets damaged or the crane gets damaged then again there is a third party liability okay so all these things which which you you do something and the other other party is the loss because you are a big ship and you don't feel the loss that that can be little minor uh, uh, dent on the ship side or anything but the small boat is sunk uh, or the net is totally cut but nothing happened to the ship and you hit the boy boy sank uh, you know 
all these things can happen so basically these are all others property you are destroying others property basically you know so in that case p and i has to kick in and they will be paying what whatever is the loss to make good the loss for the third party okay liability as per the clc convention okay what is the clc convention is civil liability convention okay uh, civil liability convention is basically specifically for oil tankers okay uh, what what happened was <coughs> this uh, third party pni club no they were not able to uh, cover uh, such a huge amount okay so that is why this clc convention was uh, brought into force okay so basically the liability is with the owner of the vessel okay it is basically for the oil tanker pollution okay so that is that is also persistent oil which is basically the crude oil heavy oil the black oils kind of thing you know so it it, it can be uh, uh, you know heavy oil different types of heavy oils crude oils all those things okay so that is the liability as per the clc okay now the third is one fourth of the collision liability what we saw there in the previous slide allen machinery they carry the 3/4 of the collision liability so the remaining 1/4 is covered by the protection and indemnity club insurance okay 1/4 of $8 that is $2 okay total damages $12 total expenses $12 out of which uh, two thirds uh, as per the arbitration and court rules was uh, assigned to our ship and uh, one third was to the other ship and uh, two thirds of twelve dollars was eight dollars, and uh, out of the eight dollars, three fourth will be covered by the Hallan machinery, that is six dollars, and one fourth collision liability will be covered by the protection and indemnity insurance, that is two dollars. Okay, that's how the calculation is. So we have seen till now we have the total uh, three types of assets which can be insured. First is the ship itself, second is the cargo. Third is the third party liability of because of the ship operation or accident. First we saw hull and machinery uh, which is the ship. Ship is divided into hull and machinery. So you have two different underwriters. Underwriters are basically who pay you the money. You know you pay them the insurance, uh, insurance premiums. Okay, you pay the insurance premiums. They pay you the insurance money in case of any accident. Okay, they are called underwriters. Okay. So there are two types of underwriters. One is the Holland Machinery underwriters, and second is the P&I clubs. Okay, protection and indemnity clubs. We will uh, we will see briefly. Uh, again, uh, you know, basically the P&I clubs uh, also started uh, like over the classification society where it started. You know, as we discussed in the last video, it also started in the. Uh, Lloyd's coffee shop uh, that was the most famous uh, place for all the stakeholders of maritime industry come and meet in okay there only they thought ke, uh, all the owners are there and uh, in one accident they have to pay a lot of money so they thought why not let us pool the money and uh, uh, you know uh, we can uh, avert any uh, big uh, insurance claims so that uh, we have the money from before so basically what is the uh, logic of pni club uh, <clears throat> there are uh, 10 owners assume okay each owner is uh, putting a yearly premium of 1 dollar okay so they have this 10 dollars this pni club so they make a club the club uh, has 10 owners 10 ship owners and they put uh, 1 dollar each every year okay so that is the 10 dollars every year in the third year they have 30 dollars and uh, in case the vessel one of the vessels has an accident and they have a 15 dollar claim so that becomes easy to be paid from the uh, club's money which, which is already uh, collected with them okay rather than one single owner paying 15 dollars will be very very expensive for him okay so because he is just paying one one uh, one dollar uh, per year okay and at that time if he has to pay 15 dollars as a insurance claim that will be a big burden for him so in this case he still continues to pay uh, keep on paying one dollar per year 
and uh, his uh, claim is covered so that that's the biggest uh, advantage of this pni club uh, okay uh, so we have various pni clubs uh, around the world and uh, we will not go much deep into the pni club this is the basic idea of what a pni club is okay and third is cargo owners insurance okay insurance of cargo so they basically do the uh, simple insure uh, cargo insurance through any of the uh, uh, underwriters as we saw in the uh, last one liability as per the fund convention okay this is again specifically for oil tankers like we discussed the clc uh this is the fund convention which is again very similar to uh pni club uh, thing you know uh, because the clc clc clearly put the responsibility of the claim to be paid by the ship owner okay and in case of uh, uh, based on the the insurance claim is limited okay the insurance claim is limited based on the size of the ship okay we cannot because in case if if it is not limited you know it is unlimited then when they go for insurance for the clc the pna club is going to charge a hefty uh, premium uh, because there is no limit of liability that they can be keep on going 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 so they will have a insurance uh, insurance premium very very high so the what is the ship owner going to do uh, ship owner is going to uh, uh charge the same from the cargo owner as per the charter party you know the charter rates they are going to keep it very very high uh, so that uh, you know they can get the insurance premium uh, for the clc convention so to have a balance they limited based on the size of the ship they limited the uh, claim amount ki uh, boss you can claim only this much so uh, they, you have specific figures in the clc convention of uh, till how much you can go that that we don't need so uh that there are figures you know ki above beyond which you cannot go okay so what happens uh, for example we we were talking about that 15 dollars right so uh, assume uh, this, this is the uh, oil pollution okay and the ship owner as per clc is liable only for uh, 10 dollars okay but the damage is 15 dollars then what happens in this case then that $5 additional is paid by the fund convention fund convention is again uh, uh, it is funded by uh, there is a slight difference between the pni club and the fund okay pni club is basically the ship owners who are making a club and pay, paying the premium in case of fund convention it is basically who is receiving the cargo who is supposed to who are supposed to receive the cargo and the cargo got spilt at sea they are going to form a club and they are going to pay for the uh, they pay the premiums okay so okay uh, both are uh, invested right on the ship both the cargo owners and the ship owners both are invested and both have the uh, both should carry some liability it is not only the only the ship owners but uh, the ship uh, the cargo owners also should have some liability because if they did not have the cargo they didn't want the cargo then the ship would not have uh, taken the cargo so she, the pollution would not have happened in the first place itself okay <laughs> so that way uh, the uh, imo thought ki even the cargo owner should be brought into the ambit so that's why this fund convention was uh, started whereby the cargo owners pay the premium and in case it is beyond the clc limits then this fund kicks in and they pay the third party liability okay in case of oil pollution uh, you can imagine that the the amount of claims will be very very huge uh, you, you know they can uh, as it was told uh, during our times you know in case of oil pollution and uh, there is some uh, damage to the coast even the fishing man who has who is just uh, using a rod for fishing can come and claim that my livelihood is uh, destroyed so i want compensation okay the resorts which are there on the beach which uh, where the oil went and finally settled they can tell come and tell that our business is affected please pay us compensation so there is no the, the, anybody can come and tell ki we are affected we please pay the compensation so in case of oil pollution the liability can be very very huge okay so that's that's why uh, the clc convention and the fund convention both are there only for covering this oil pollution okay so 
that's it uh, that's that's end of the uh, small presentation on the insurance i hope you have understood uh, the importance of marine insurance and what uh, what all types of insurance are available and what are the assets which need to be insured and also uh, who pays for what uh, you know pni club pays for what all uh, liabilities the halan machinery insurance pays for what all liabilities what does the clc convention pay for what does the fund convention pay for all this we have seen in this video thank you so much for watching this video uh, this is a summary of what uh, websites we have we are maintaining you know so one is the maritime platform.com where you are actually seeing this video which is a video sharing website where you can also share your own videos and and get paid for it you know uh, you will get you will get credits for every view from the first video see for us clan is a video where uh, you know people can come and ask questions and it is more of like a quora or something like that for the only for the maritime industry uh, where people come and ask and questions and the industry experts stalwarts can reply to them see for us blog we have written a lot of blogs and we keep write, continuously writing blogs so we can uh, you can uh, go and get knowledge from there also shipshorejob.com/careers this is for the shore job only okay as as i as i mentioned earlier as well we don't do any cfer recruiting we don't do anything uh, with regards to the cfers placement on board it is only for the shore jobs for the maritime industry in the shore office shore side office okay and uh, we have mentioned all these handles uh, for our all our social media platforms please do go through and uh, follow them we keep updating all the videos there also and we keep posting there also so that's it thank you so much have a nice day take care be safe follow covid appropriate behaviors thank you so much